So here are some problems with aldehydes and ketones for you to try. Select the correct IUPAC name for this compound. Well, if I look at this compound, the, the principal chain, the longest chain with the functional group, has one, two, three, four, five carbons, so it's going to be a pentanal. Uh, if I look at the substituents, I can see that on the number two, I have an ethyl, and on the number four, I have a methyl. I'm going to put them in alphabetical order, and I see it's 2-ethyl-4-methyl. And is this R? Let's go ahead. There's, that's the only option, but let's just check for practice to make sure it is R. This is the, prime, uh, the highest priority. The hydrogen is back. The next highest priority is over here, so the rotation is R. So it is R. The correct name is this one. What is the correct IUPAC name for this compound? Well, let's find the longest chain. Remember, you always want to find the longest chain that has the most substituents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the longest chain. There is greater substituents if you go down this, but that gives you a shorter chain. So it's hept. And then if I look at the, the attachment, I'm going to see that we have an isopropyl group on the number four carbon. Let's check to see if it is RS. The highest priority is right here. Second highest is there. That is clockwise, but the hydrogen is coming out, so it has to be S. The, um, so on the number four, we've got either an isopropyl or we can also call it a 1-methyl-ethyl, but that's not down here. So if I look down here, I see there is a heptan 3 one 1, 2, 3, or we can call it a 3-heptanone. And on the number four is the isopropyl group. So the correct answer is this one. Okay, select the correct IUPAC name for this molecule. Well, if I look at this molecule, I'll see right off the bat that it's cyclopent. And there's an ene in there, so a cyclopentene own. We are not going to choose this one down here because we we wouldn't even call that a keto group if it was secondary. We would call it oxo. But uh, because the ene is secondary to the own, we're going to call it a cyclopent ene own and give the own a number one uh, on the number one carbon. And if I look at this, so that means that it's either going to be two cyclopent ene own or two cyclopent five own. Well, that's giving the wrong priority there. We wouldn't call it three cyclopentenone because we always uh, number the ene where the alkene starts, not where it ends. And where is the ethyl on the new number two carbon? So the correct answer is this right here, two ethyl, two cyclopentenone. Which of the following will not produce an aldehyde or ketone? Well, if I look at the first one, I can see that this is a tertiary alcohol. These are not oxidized, so there would be no reaction to this compound. This one will give us a ketone and an aldehyde both. There would be an aldehyde on this carbon and a ketone on this carbon, so the resulting product would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 oxo hepten, uh, So this one will not produce an aldehyde or ketone. Which of the following is the hydrate of a ketone? Well, for you to have a hydrate, you have to have what's called a geminal diol. This is not a diol. It's just a regular alcohol, so it cannot be a hydrate. 
This is a diol, but it's not geminol, it's vicinal. The, the alcohols have to be on the same carbon. So this is not a hydrate. This is a mono all, so it cannot be a hydrate. The only two possible are these. If I look at this one, you would see this is a, would form a carbonyl on the end of a chain. So this is from an aldehyde. So this is a hydrate of an aldehyde. This one would give you a carbonyl in the middle of a chain with a carbon on either side. So this is the hydrate of a ketone. Draw to cyclohexenone. To draw two cyclohexene for uh, exenone, first you would do is draw the cyclohexane. Then you would put an own on it, and then you would count from one to two and put your ene. Draw 5,5-dimethyl-1,3-cyclohexane-dione. Well, to do this, the first thing I would do is, again, draw a cyclohexane, and then on the number one and number three carbons, I'm going to put ketone functional groups. Then one, two, three, four, five, two methyls end up there. Draw trans, three isopropyl cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Carbaldehyde is the term that we give to an aldehyde that has been stuck onto a ring. So cyclohexane carbaldehyde will be a cyclohexane with a carbon that is a carbon, uh, car, uh, an aldehyde group attached to the ring. That is that part. Now it says trans 3 isopropyl. So this is the number one carbon. So on the number three carbon, I'm going to put an isopropyl group and I have it down because this one is up to make it trans. Draw 222-trichloroethanol. Well, the first thing I would do is draw ethanol, ethanol, which is a two-carbon aldehyde. Then on the second carbon, you would put three chlorines. Name this compound. Well, you would count the carbons, and you would find that there are seven so this is going to be a hept. Then I look to see what is my primary functional group. That's going to be the aldehyde. So it's heptanal. Where is the ketone functional group? We name it as a substituent. So it's on the number five carbon. So this is five oxo heptanal. Name this compound. Well, I can see that it has two aldehyde functional groups. So I'm going to call this cyclohexane dicarbaldehyde. Where are they located? One, three to each other, and notice they're cis. So it's cis, one, three, cyclopentane dicarbaldehyde. Name this compound. The primary chain here is not the benzene ring. It is one, two, three, that's acetone or propanone, and you have a phenyl on there. So this is the fun phenyl is going to be a substituent. So what are we going to call it? We're going to call it one phenyl, two propanone. Name this compound. If I count the carbons, I find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is going to be noni known. The own is number 2, and the ene is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 ene. So we're going to call this 7 nonine to own. Then we put the methyls on. Where are the methyls? 
on the 4 and the uh, 8 carbon. So it's 4,8-dimethyl, 7-nonine to own. Write the mechanism for this reaction. Well, the mechanism for this reaction is first you have nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl. The base is going to cause the production of hydroxide. And so the hydroxide is going to end up attacking this carbon because it has a large del positive. Once the nucleophile attacks that carbon, you can see the electrons in the pi bond are going to jump onto the oxygen. See, you have now a, a, uh, the alcohol, it's basically a, um, an alcohol group on this carbon, and this is a negative charge. Now this negative grabs a proton from any water that's around, and you end up with the hydrate. Okay, the substance form on addition of water to an aldehyde or ketone, as in the previous slide, is called what? A hydrate or vicinal means in the same area, geminal means on the same carbon. So geminal diol is what it's called. And acetal has alcohol groups added to the aldehyde and a ketal, ketal also has alcohol groups, not water, added to the carbon. What is the outcome of this reaction? This is an oxidizing agent and it's a gentle one. So it will take a primary alcohol to an aldehyde and this is the product of the reaction. What is the outcome of this reaction? If you remember from way back in previous chapters, this is oxidative cleavage that will take a double bond down to two carbonyls. Notice the aromatic part of this molecule is not touched by the oxidizing agent, only the double bond that is by itself. When it's oxidized, this part, the hydrogen that's here, is not oxidized. This becomes an aldehyde and this becomes a ketone. And so here is this carbon right here. Here is this carbon right here. This carbon becomes this carbon. This carbon is a carbon in here and that's where your oxygen was added on as a double bond. And then here is this carbon. And you see this side became an aldehyde and this side became a ketone. What reagent is needed to take this over to here? Well, if I look at this, I can see what happened. This is reduction, so I need a reducing agent. What reducing agent can I use? Well, because this is a ketone being reduced down to a, uh, an alcohol, I can either use a harsh one or I can use a gentle one. So I, either the gentle sodium borohydride in ethanol or lithium aluminum hydride and ether will work. What reagent is needed to take this aldehyde, benzaldehyde, to benzyl alcohol? Well, to take this aldehyde to the alcohol, what do you have to do? You have to do reduction again. So again, either sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride would work. How can you do this? More than one step is required, so think this through. When I look at this, I think, I think backwards to what, what can this ketone have come from? And of course I think, ooh, that could have been an alcohol. And I think, what can I take this alkene to that might get me to this? And I can take an alkene to an alcohol. So I, I, right there, I have identified my functional group sequence. I'm going to take my alkene to an alcohol and then take it to the ketone. 
The thing that I need to do now is figure out the reagents. One set of reagents that will take my alkene to the alcohol is uh, oxymercuration. You could have used borohydration. That would have worked fine. Then I can take PCC and oxidize my alcohol to the ketone. Another possibility would be to use chromic acid since a harsh oxidizing agent and a gentle oxidizing agent under these conditions would give you the same thing.